so this is something uh, I wrote about folk music and Dylan that I wanted to read to the channel. It's not the best written article, but it'll have to do. Uh, is folk music perhaps the best music at the end of the day? And if so, why? Recently, this idea about folk music being the absolute best in terms of all music traditions has been coming to me more and more. And of course, I know that to many people it will sound absurd, since for many people the idea that any one music genre could beat another will be seen as preposterous. Alas, what I'll say to those people is that they should perhaps take a moment to realize exactly what my argument is, and just why I am, all over again, coming to the conclusion that folk music does indeed beat out all the other genres, and the reason I think this is ultimately pretty simple. All the other genres seem to me to age in the literal worst of ways. It's almost, you could say, as though they're like cheap beer. Leave them out somewhere too long. The next thing you know, they've gone bad. Folk music seems instead to be like wine. Not only does it often seem that much more intriguing with age, but it's also actually rather difficult to even know its age for the common man or lady. This is because a well-written folk song, or a song that might accidentally pass into the folk canon, is typically, in my opinion, rather ambiguous. Often, the best sort of folk song doesn't really feel like it comes from a certain time, or from a certain place, or a certain person. they are songs that feel like anyone can pick them up and sing them. This is, in fact, the biggest deal of all when it comes to this, this type of music. It's unusually elastic. You can bend it in many ways. Don't Think Twice It's All Right by Bob Dylan, for instance, is almost the perfect example of just how elastic a well-written folk song can be. Many people might mistakenly believe that a song like Don't Think Twice has been endlessly covered due to the fact that Dylan's popular and the song is quite old. In my opinion, that's only part of the secret. Frank Sinatra was popular, and yet look for how many covers people have done of That's Life, which was a hit for him, and you won't find many. Look for people who have covered wildly popular Nirvana songs from the 1990s. Look for even Beatles covers with songs like Strawberry Fields Forever or I Am the Walrus, and you also won't find too many, despite the even greater popularity, in my opinion, of those songs. Something always feels a little odd, and even not right, about covering those other artists and their songs. Then look back to the Dylan covers, and suddenly you'll see they have not just been unofficially covered on sites like YouTube thousands of times, and in cafes and open mics and so forth, but also that they've been covered professionally too, nearly just as many times. Now at first, for many years, I thought it was just Dylan's popularity too. I thought this as a songwriter myself. Now I'm looking back at it all again, after a rather extended break from music or even thinking about it, and I'm beginning to see the truth of why his songs slip so easily into other people's mouths and hands, and also why they never seem to get old. Dylan himself is, in truth, hardly present as an individual in many of the best songs he has written. So many of them are written again in such an ambiguous way that there's no real sense of ownership or possession. It's almost as though there's nothing too specific about the vast majority of songs that Bob Dylan and other artists like him wrote. In the same sense that there's almost nothing too specific, or challenging for that matter, about the songs he himself originally took inspiration from. To my mind, these songs are absolutely nothing like the Beatles, I Am the Walrus, or so forth, which feels completely owned by the Beatles, as I said, or Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana, the list goes on and on. They're also definitely nothing like most of the current mainstream songs we have in front of us. And this is especially the case with the rap songs, many of which are great songs in the moment. Of that, I have no doubt but which are so personalized and individualized and even long with a huge vocabulary that anyone else performing them besides the original writer and or rapper almost seems unthinkable. 
With Dylan and other folk artists like him, this sort of cage was almost never at all present. Indeed, it was not just the passage of the decades that eventually opened up Bob Dylan's songs for further interpretation. Many of them were actually being widely covered by other artists right away when he was still in his prime, and this was this was being done professionally. Numerous albums of people singing and doing Dylan songs by all sorts of artists came out in the 60s and 70s are, and are in fact still coming out even now. Last year, I listened to one in Italian, where a man named Francesco Di Gregory translated them all. Some of them, and the translations, were admittedly awkward. Some, however, were phenomenal. Complete, wondrous reworkings that totally worked for Francesco. Now, could this really happen with the style of most songs today, no matter the genre? Or are we are now on a path where songs are going to be forever locked in a cage of the one artist who originally wrote them. Will we ever have another artist like Dylan who can give us as many songs to cover as he in fact did? Some people might think yes, and one reason they might think this is because they may slightly put Dylan in the same pile with a lot of Nashville and or Memphis type country singer songwriters who like him also use the stereotypical acoustic guitar to get their songs across. The ironic truth about those Nashville-bound folks, though, is this. As much as they try to look folk, they ain't actually folk at all. Most of the songs that come on in Nashville or other such circles are often just as caged as the hip-hop songs or the rock songs or any genre songs at all, for that matter. They can't travel. They're too personal, too specific. Songs by Toby Keith, Brad Paisley, Carrie Underwood... Miranda Lampert, company, the song list goes on and on again, aren't necessarily bad songs, but they're too constrained. It sounds strange to say it, but there's almost too much personality within them. This personality is the exact thing that gets them stuck in the cage. People look at songs about specific things and tend to stop liking them pretty fast, in my experience. Three years go by, the song feels three years old, you don't like it anymore. In fact, even just using a specific person's name, any name at all, in a song can make the song eventually go stale as the decades pass, since the name itself may eventually pass out of time. A song like My Darling Clementine, great song, seems like a folk song, has now kind of aged in a bad way, however, just because of the name. This is also the case with a Dylan song like Visions of Johanna. It's kind of dead now for this exact reason. It was a case of Bob trying to be specific. It's also the same with a song by him like Subterranean Homesick Blues. I haven't listened to that song in years, and I would never even consider covering it, save for a wildly reworked version on a professional album. Playing Subterranean Homesick Blues night after night I can't even imagine doing it. It's good on the record, like all genre songs often are, but it's terrible once it's laid bare. Look at a song like I Pity the Poor Immigrant, however, from the John Wesley Harding album, and you have a song that I can easily imagine someone pulling out and singing even a century from now without a single problem, in the same way that we sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing or Grand Old Flag on and on. The common man of now knows those songs are old, but he also doesn't quite know their origin or their truly specific time period of birth. There's a rough idea of the time period, but that rough idea for the common man is spread across almost two or even three centuries. This is what Bob Dylan was going for, I believe, with some of his best and most memorable songs, and this, in a certain light, is sort of ironic once you consider his reputation for the various magazines and so forth, as this phenomenal storyteller. In my opinion, Dylan's entire strength is that he actually wasn't much of a storyteller at all in the end. He was instead just a style of songwriter that had not been seen for a while by that point in the world's history in the 1960s. If Dylan had actually been a storyteller 
in the traditional sense of the term. So much of what he wrote could have never transferred hands and voices the way it did. It would have felt too much like him as an individual, and since you wouldn't be able to disconnect it from him, the songs would not have been resurrected. Just like you can't resurrect so many of those Beatles songs from Lennon or McCartney. The early ones you can. Can't Buy Me Love. Yesterday you can. There are a number of them that you can resurrect, but there's also a number of them that cannot be resurrected at all outside of that one band. Now, many people are probably just like I am with music, I would imagine, and they probably tend to go through phases with who they like and who they don't like, who they obsess over, or even, of course, who they eventually get sick of and despise and not like at all anymore. I can't even begin to tell you how many artists I've gone through at this point in my life that I now can't stand at all. It's been the majority, in truth, and in terms of my listening, most of the artists that I'm trending with, I'll probably be done with four to five years from now, just like I'm completely done with the artists who I was listening to four to five years in the past. The truth for me, in fact, is that I find almost all of the 1960s classic rock albums, which I was obsessed with years ago, almost completely intolerable to listen to at this point. I can't listen to them. They are played out. These select Bob Dylan songs, though, that he wrote in that folk style, Like I Pity the Poor Immigrant, or All Along the Watchtower, so on and so forth, Don't Think Twice It's All Right, I Believe in You, Lord Bless My Child, all the other folk songs in that same vein, they are constantly refreshed. They do not die. They can be resurrected at any time. This, to me, is a masterpiece style of song. Not necessarily the best story, but a goddamn good song.